Who am I? Am I defined by other people's opinions of me? Am I defined by my GPA? Do I find my identity in my batting average, PR, or other sports stats? Am I more than my family life, my struggles, my fears? Is my worth wrapped up in my Instagram followers, relationship status, friend groups? Am I enough? Like many of you, these questions have haunted me. Luckily, my story never ended there. From feeling like an outcast to finally belonging. Overcoming fears of embarrassment and self-doubt. Learning to accept who God has made me to be. The story is mine, it's me, and how Jesus has shown me that it's okay to just be me. My name is Meadow Riggins, and this is my yearbook. Hey y'all, my name is Meadow Riggins, and I'm a senior at Cambridge High School, and in the fall, I'll be attending Florida State University. So, um, I've been coming to Stone Creek since I was an eight child, went from the baby's hall, kid's hall, high school, here we are. But um, I'm so honored to be able to speak on stage for y'all and call this place my home. It's been a blessing to come here just every Wednesday. So, Sean told me to start off, it would be a good idea to uh, introduce myself and give some facts. So, here's some things about me. Uh, I have three brothers and growing up in a big family with a lot of boys has kind of conditioned me to be a very competitive person. Uh, we saw that in pickleball today. But um, yeah, I'm super competitive. I love sports. I've played a bunch of sports in high school, track, softball, flag, and lacrosse. Um, I'm just super into competing, super into everything sports. And my favorite team to watch are the Braves. Uh, no, I say it's every season, but we're going all the way. Uh, yeah, so basically, yeah, growing up with three brothers, uh, I kind of became a very big tomboy because, you know, when you surround yourself with a lot of people that, I mean, just look at that, I don't know. When you surround yourself with people, you kind of start to become them a little bit. So don't, just don't look at the hair, don't look at the outfit, just don't worry about it. But um, yeah, it's funny to look back on now how having three brothers molded who I am because like, I just wonder who I would be if I had three sisters and just completely different person. But uh, yeah, so, you know, when I was growing up, uh, my brothers molded the way I looked, molded my hobbies, molded my interests. I wanted to watch the same shows, play the same sports, be faster than them. Like, even if it was like to home base and kickball or if it was to the car for shotgun, like I had to get there first. So I was letting like an expectation for myself of having to be this like perfect sibling mold my identity when I was growing up. So, you know, then I got to middle school and with middle school, I really just like longed to fit in. You know, I was comparing myself to other girls in the hallway. I set this expectation for myself that I needed to have this perfect image to other people. I was letting other people's opinions of me, you know, shape how I thought about myself, how I carried myself, how I treated myself. Every word that came out of my mouth, everything that I did, it was all driven to please other people. I was letting comparison mold my life and I was just trying to keep up with the perfect image that I convinced myself I needed to maintain. So as middle school continues, life got a little real and my family kind of went through some changes. My parents got divorced and I felt like my whole life was wrecked. I felt like I needed to be strong all the time, maintaining a perfect image for everybody else around me. And this perfect attitude was molding myself to try to maintain this picture of a perfect family. I was scared to let other people into my brokenness. I didn't want my home life to affect my reputation. I didn't want other people to see how much I was hurting. And I was so afraid of vulnerability that I let the, my struggles define who I was and mold me into a tired, burnt out, and numb person. So when COVID shut down, everyone kind of became glued to their phone. Let's be real, you can't even deny it. Uh, social media expanded, which kind of maintained me, no, which kind of led me to want to maintain some type of like perfect persona. Um, I was seeing uh, what other people were doing online, whether it was an influencer, whether it was a celebrity, if, whether it was just another girl that went to my school or somebody at the church. I was embarrassed of myself and I let social media and the idea of creating a perfect persona mold the things that I thought about myself and mold the things that I did. So 
you know, continuing on, everybody knows, you know, going into middle school and high school, sports start getting extremely competitive, and the pressure, the pressure to be the best can drive you to want to become the perfect athlete. So I really resonate myself with this one because I just, I set real, unrealistic expectations for myself, causing my performances and my stats and my numbers control my worth on and off the field. My expectations to be the best molded my worth, molded how I carried myself, and it molded my entire life. When we went back to in-person school, grades and pressure became very, became very real with high school. And considering how impossible they make it now to get into college these days, I understand what it feels like to be crushed under the pressure of maintaining a high GPA. I was comparing myself to my classmates' ACT, my classmates' SAT, my teacher's expectations for myself, my parents' expectations for myself. Honestly, what I was doing never felt like enough. I let my numbers mold my identity and found my worth in my infinite campus profile. <laughs> Expanding on that, you know, as you get older, everyone's trying to figure out who they are. Everybody's trying to figure out their friend groups. Where do they fit in? Where do they belong? And I found myself identifying with people that I was surrounding myself with trying to be more like the people around me rather than trying to be more like Jesus. I let my friendships mold my decisions and how I viewed myself. And I found myself just being let down every single time by trying to worship people rather than worship God. Here's the problem, y'all. You can't be the perfect sibling the perfect, with a perfect image, with a perfect family, with a perfect persona, as a perfect athlete, as a perfect student and friend can't be all those things at once because if you're molding yourself to look like any other person, if you're molding yourself into other people's expectations or even your own, you're never gonna feel whole. And that was my problem. I just never, I never felt completely content with my life because I was so focused on molding it to look like other people's. I was guarding an image of what other people felt like, no, what I felt like I needed other people needing me to be feeling like I needed to be a different person for different people and that I was living for things that weren't even mine. I was molding myself into other people's expectations. And the problem with this is truly overworked clay dries out. Example, this is jank. But basically, <laughs> it's true. If you're an artist and you're working with clay and just forming and molding, if you work with it for too long, it dries out. And um, the side effects of this in real life, uh, I was burnt out, I was numb, anxious, I struggled to hold friends, maintain motivations, or even try to get better. I was trying to be everything for everyone, and I couldn't be anything for myself. When I noticed my own imperfections, I found myself trying to fill in the cracks of my own life, but it was never enough. To be, to be real, we can't fit worldly things into a God-sized hole. Everybody has imperfections, everybody has problems and cracks in their clay, but I was over-involving my things, I was over-involving myself in things to try to fill in spiritual cracks with my own solutions. I was distracting myself from feeling how tired and empty I was. I wanted to be the perfect everything and I couldn't keep up. Just because I thought things were gonna get better, more cracks would appear. The solution to not being cracked and broken has been and always will be turning to Jesus and realizing that I'm not the one who's supposed to be molding my life to look like everybody else's because Jesus is molding my life to look like his. To really get this analogy so y'all stop looking at me like I'm a crazy person playing with pink Play-Doh up here, open your Bibles up to Jeremiah 18. I'll give you a second. So Jeremiah 18, verse three says, so I went down to the potter's house and I saw him working at the wheel, but the pot he was shaping from clay was marred in his hands. So the potter formed it into another pot, shaping it as seemed best to him. Then the word of the Lord came to me. He said, can I not do with you, Israel, as this potter does, declares the Lord. Like clay in the hand of a potter, so are you in my hand, Israel. So here we see Jeremiah and Jesus are talking, and Jeremiah goes down to the potter's house as he's working at the wheel, and the pot that the potter has, it's cracked and it's broken. Marred means, it's an adjective describing word, and it means damaged or spoiled to a certain extent, made less perfect, attractive, useful, etc. So, 
The pot was marred, it was broken, it was cracked, it was unformed, but the potter formed it into a new pot shaped seem best as him. So how I interpreted this, guys, is that we're made new with Jesus. We're shaped as seem best to him. We are the clay, he is the potter. And God molds us as he sees best, and he molds us with purpose. Your life is worth living, your story is worth telling. He makes us new. So, flipping on over to 2 Corinthians 4. It's our next, you guys can get over there. It says, for God who said, let light shine out of darkness, let light shine out of darkness, made his light shine in our hearts to give us the light of knowledge of God's glory displayed in the face of Christ. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that this all surpassing power from God and not from us. We are hard pressured on, we are hard pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. We always carry around in our body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be revealed in our body. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. All right, y'all. So through this, God sees your imperfections. God sees your cracks. He knows they hurt, but he doesn't leave you broken. It says, let let light shine out of darkness. We are able to shine through Jesus from Jesus. We're hard pressed, but not crushed. We're hard pressed, not crushed. We're persecuted, not abandoned. Struck down, not destroyed. Our imperfections give us purpose, and our purpose is to spread the gospel. We're not being crushed, we're being molded into his image. The cracks from your past, the pain from your experiences, they aren't gonna disappear once you're saved and it's not magically gonna get better once you accept Jesus into your life. Jesus wants to work through them, Jesus wants to work through you and he wants to make you within him and with him. All right, so from this we have to let Jesus shine through your cracks rather than being caught up in the brokenness and cracks themselves. I know what it feels like to be comfortable and believing that you're controlling your life and you're controlling this image and you're controlling the things that you're doing and it can feel uncomfortable to let go of all of that, but it frees you up and it frees you up to be yourself and be able to become whole, united with Jesus. The Holy Spirit is what fills those cracks and shines through them. So that's our next point. The Holy Spirit wants to shine through your imperfections. When I felt crushed, I turned to the potter, Jesus, who molded me into who he needed me to be. And this leads me to use your story. Don't be ashamed of your brokenness because you can use it. Someone out here, y'all, is praying for things that we take for granted. God never promised an easy life. God never promised a perfect life, but he did promise a life of purpose. Being a Christian doesn't mean that everything's gonna be healed doesn't mean that you're always gonna be okay, but the cracks in your clay allow the light of the Holy Spirit to shine through that pain. I've struggled a lot and I, feel, and I felt like I was never gonna be able to overcome the things that I had been through. It can be comfortable in the hurt and not wanting to get better, but through accepting Jesus and letting him take a hold of my story, I've been able to serve him to the best of my ability. Now, I work with struggling children at Camp Arrowhead, counselors, whoop, whoop, uh, (laughs) and let them know that what they're feeling is real and that the Lord is for them and not against them. A few years ago, uh, I had the pleasure of baptizing Stella, who's now a sixth grade girl. I don't know if she's here. Go, Stella! Um, That attends Wake. And a few months ago, I had the pleasure of baptizing Ansley. Uh, Is she here? Ansley. She might not be here. I have no idea. But she's the strongest girl I know. And middle schoolers, I want y'all to know that I'm so proud of the leaders that y'all are becoming. This church, it's gonna be with y'all soon. So proud of the leaders that y'all are becoming and I trust that you guys are gonna lead this ministry in a few years. Um, 
And through all this, I've learned that I'm not the potter. God is the potter. I had to let God mold my life so I could truly start living it. And this is the same for y'all. When we stop trying to mold our lives and, sur- and we can fully surrender it to the potter who is Jesus, we can find the freedom that we're designed to live in. And I wanna be so clear, this process is not gonna happen in a day. It happens little by little, minute by minute, day by day. It's a process and for me, it's still going. I don't know how God's gonna form me into person I'm gonna be tomorrow, much less a year when I'm in Florida. But uh, I can trust that it's gonna be good because I have a good God who has good plans for me and you. When we doubt it, Lord remind us, we're wonderfully made. You're an artist and a potter. We're your canvas and your clay. So now I wanna go into some thank yous. Um, First, I wanna thank my parents. I think they're back there somewhere. Hello, parents. Thank you for, (laughs) thank you for always leading me towards Jesus and just molding me into the person I've become strong and independent. Uh, To my brothers, Jesse, Jacob, and Luke. Jesse, thanks for always being supportive. Uh, I know you're watching online. He's in Kentucky, but also thank you for sending me 20,000 Instagram reels a day. Jacob, thanks for always keeping me in check and humbling me when I need it. And Luke, thanks for being a goofball and stealing all my money. You should be thanking me. Yeah. (laughs) To the interns, thanks for being my support group. I know you're all scattered around here, but you know, there's not a day go, a day doesn't go by when I'm not thankful for our spike ball runs and our, everything that we do. I don't even know what we do, but we do a lot. Our chairs, I'm just so grateful for y'all. To the wake team, Sean, you've always been so supportive and you've always made me feel like I'm at home here. Jackie, you put in so much hard work for this ministry. Eliza, I see your strive and your determination in everything that you do. And to Emily and Ryan, I love y'all. You're so energetic and we would not be half of what we are without you guys. Uh, I wanna thank my small group. Uh, You know, Regina and Donna, y'all have been there since I was the little girl with bangs. Um, Thank you for always sticking with me. And to my small group, thanks for being the best, most supportive group of girls. Y'all truly are the best. So, yeah. So with all ado, my name is Meta Riggins and this is my yearbook. Can you give it up for Meta one more time? Come on! Man, um, I want for you guys to know that what Meadow just did was incredible, and she just dominated the game. And uh, man, I really hope that you take to heart some of the things that Meadow just talked about. Um, man, ask yourself the question, what's molding me? What am I allowing to mold my life? Like, what am I allowing to mold me, and what am I turning into? And if it's not Jesus, then tonight, come on, tonight, it needs to change. Tonight, it needs to change because Jesus is the only one who can mold you into who you're supposed to be. So what we do at the uh, end of yearbooks is we pray over the person that just did it. So we want to pray over Meadow as she goes off to Florida State. Come on. And um, a lot of Florida State fans. Go Knowles. Uh, And uh, we're going to pray for her, and then we're going to go back into a time of worship. So what we'd love to you is just extend a hand. Um, We believe in the power of prayer, and so we just want to lay hands on Meadow and pray over her. Gosh, Jesus, we are so grateful for you and the gift that Meadow Riggins is to you and to this church and to us tonight. God, thank you for the words that she just spoke. Gosh, how much power was within them, how much truth is within her story. God, I pray that tonight, every one of everybody in this room, whether a small group leader or a staff person or a student, God, that we would ask ourselves the same question that Meadow just asked us. What are we being shaped into? What's molding us? And God, I pray that we would put ourselves, surrender ourselves back into your hand as the potter. God, thank you for uh, the vulnerability that she just had to share her story. And Jesus, I just believe that Florida State is blessed to have Meadow Riggins come onto the campus. And Jesus, we believe there's a mission field that um, man is gonna hear about you because Meadow's gonna be there. And Jesus, I just uh, pray that uh, her time in college, she would fall even more in love with you. Um, God, that she would experience the power of your spirit even more. And God, that she would have an influence Influence um, and make disciples um, who make disciples. God, we are just so grateful for you. It's in your beautiful name we pray. Amen. Awesome. 
Man, we're going to go back into a time of worship, and we're going to sing maybe the most appropriate song that has ever been um, when it comes to coming off of a message. We're going to sing a song called Canvas and Clay, and uh, my heart, our hope for you in this moment is that you'd be able to sit with the Lord and ask him, hey, if you're not molding me right now, if I'm not surrendering to you, if I'm not putting my life in your hands, Oh, Jesus, I just want to commit myself to you right now and have this moment because what this song says, what we're about to sing is that Jesus is not finished with us yet. And maybe you need to hear that tonight. Jesus is not finished with you yet. And so I don't know what you're walking in. I don't know what you're walking through. I don't know if all of you even know Jesus yet or you've ever surrendered to him. But I want for you to know that no matter what, how deep you feel like you are in sin, how dark of a place you feel like you might be, hey, God's not finished with you yet. And he wants you. He wants you back. And so we're going to worship tonight. And maybe, just maybe, you can have a moment. Get away from your friends if they're going to distract you. And have a moment to lean in with Jesus and say, God, I believe you're not finished with me yet. And so I'm not finished with you. I'm coming back to you tonight. So I'm going to pray for us, and then we're going to stand, and we're going to go back into a time of worship. Jesus, we believe that you are the potter. God, we are the clay. And Jesus, I believe that, um, man, you want to shape us and mold us into who you want for us to be. God, I pray that everyone in this room tonight, God, would just stop trying to uh, shape their own lives or look to things that won't satisfy and um, allow those things to mold us. God, I pray that it would just be you, Jesus. God, that we would listen to what Meadow said. God, we would listen to the truth of your word, and we know that you are the potter. You created us from the beginning of time, and you know how to perfectly shape us into who you've called us to be. So, Jesus, I pray that these next few moments of singing this song will be a special moment to remember that we are safe in your hands. We can leave it to you, Jesus, because you are the author of life. We love you. It's in your beautiful name we pray. Amen.